Welcome back to Nick Landis Comic Corner. Classic, classic, classics. This episode number 2268 and double shot number 2162. More Spider Man, more Doctor Strange. First of Doctor Strange, we have Mar Masterwork Doctor Strange Volume 3, which collects issues 169 to 179 of Doctor Strange Volume 1 and Avengers 61. Yeah, the cover is ne there's an explanation for that. So, by the way, in case you're curious, though, these issues were released in a period of June 1968 to April 1969. So, yes, yeah, so these particular issues, I'm almost on the 60s. Mostly put, basically, now, the whole idea of giving an ongoing series is a good idea because he's a good seller. So, basically, 169. Now, in case you're curious, though, there is no Doctor Strange Volume 1, number 1. There's never an issue called that. Nope. Never has. Oh, by the way, the artwork is mostly by Gene Cole, but this issue here is done by Dan Atkins. Now, this is a common thing Marvel would do. They did it for Doctor Strange, they did it for Thor, Hulk, and, I, and uh, Captain America. These four are the ones I can think of who have done this, where their numbering and continuation of a different series numbering. I said, wait, wait, just a bit. So, this issue is kind of in the way issue number one. So, mostly put, you kind of detail a little bit of Doctor Strange's backstory. Why not? I'm sure we probably haven't seen in a while. But I was mostly put, it's just a retelling of his origin story. And then 170, he battles Nightmare again. Yep, while his mentor is dying. Yep, that's what he does in 170. Bows Nightmare again, just like he did in the debut issue. And then 171, we have Tom Palmer do the issue. And also Dr. Strange do more odd stuff, and he sees Clea again. Apparently, this woman's name is Miss Bentley, so she's been hanging out with Dr. Strange for a bit, so while he's waiting for Clea, his, his love, Clea, to come back. If I just weird guy in this issue, yes. Yeah, so this guy apparently is a herald of a demon we'll see in a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he also gets transferred to Dormammu again. Because of course he does. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. I mean, this is for Dormammu. This was the first time he appeared since uh, Doctor Strange 146. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was his last parents part of this issue. Yep. And he's here for three straight issues. Yep. He's here for this issue and the following two. It's basically a quick three-parter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is where we find out that Umar and Duman were our siblings. We wrap up this issue 173. And then we basically like he defeats him and goes back on his own. Then he basically fights Sintesh in 174. Mm-hmm. Whenever he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, by the way, in the case of Domamu, after issue 173, he pops up again in Mar Fanfare, number two, which is a Defenders issue. And then he's not sitting in Defenders Defender War. Yep. 
Yeah, he pops Avengers Infinity War, and then he returns in Doctor Strange. There's also a guy called Lord Necron. It was one one shot appearance this guy. But Satesh. This issue was his debut. Yeah, he's basically a giant demon. And he's here for this two parter. And then he's not seen again until Giant Spins number two. We also have this group called Sons of Tatesh. And they're only here for for like seven issues. They're here from 175 to 178. And these these characters start something in particular. For Doctor Strange, that, uh, because Belly and Satesh, Cause a change in Doctor Strange. What is it? You'll find out. Also, Clea gets kidnapped one issue. Yeah, Clea. By the way, this is when Gene Clone takes over. Mm hmm. And then basically, in order to deal with Satesh. <clears throat> Which, by the way, the, one of the brothers, Amadeus, he gets killed off in issue 176. Then he comes back. The very next issue. And these guys, pretty much in the way, um, they also fight, he fights Taparu again. Yeah. So basically, Doctor Strange does something completely unthinkable. Now, this look for Doctor Strange would last until Incredible Hulk 126. It's his full body suit with the mask. Yes, this was a Roy Thomas thing. And according to an alleged rumor, it's never confirmed about this, but this look killed the Doctor Strange in sales. Because people were not happy with this new look for the character. Yeah, and also apparently Wong that about it, like the man called Doctor Strange, where it basically became more superhero esque. Yeah, this is all Roy Thomas is doing, and then one seventy eight he teams up with Black Knight. Yep. And then after that little two part with him, then we can move over to uh, another book where Thomas was writing at this point, The Avengers. Yep. So Doctor Strange team Avengers for an issue. And then it's right back to his own book. And that's it for that. Yep, that's it for that. Yeah. Now you might be thinking, now here's something you might not know about Doctor Strange title. Did you know this book actually had a reprint? Yes, it did. As a matter of fact, one time we like not in this trade or the next trade I'm talking discussing for for Doctor Strange. Uh, that is because basically issue 179 is a reprint. Yes, that is correct. It is in fact a reprint. Next up, we have something really exciting to talk about here. Excuse me. Now we have, we're touring to Amazing Spirit Epic Collection, Volume 21, The Return of the Sinister Six. First time since Amazing Spirit, in number, number one. Then we got a brand new lineup here. We have Dr. We have Dr. Octopus Vienna with the Vulture, Electro, Sandman, who's actually good at this point, Mysterio, and replacing Craven <coughs> is Hobgoblin. Yep, this book collects issues 334, 350. And Spider Man Spirits of the Earth. It's a one shot. They're right in here. This, this issue is done by Chris uh, Chris Voss and David Cellini. Chris Voss also has some artwork here with Eric Larson and Mark Bagley. Oh, and these issues came up in the period of 
well, July 1992, August of 1991. Charles Voss does the, this amazing artistic design thing for Spirits. It's mostly just a, it's basically just a Spider-Man story. It's basically like a character piece. Just deals with normal mundane stuff, just normal stuff here. It's like a ghost story, this one, but I was surprised you never did get any more of this one. It's just a really good one shot. One shot's really long, too. And then finally, after we wrap up the one shot, they begin the return of the Sinister Six story arc, which is six issues. Starts issue 334, wraps up with 339. Uh, in this two-parter, in this six-parter, we see the death of two characters. One was actually uh, a guy who was dating May at this point, uh, named Nathan. He got killed off by the Vulture in these issues. And also Mary Jane Stock got killed off too, and also his, the guy who killed him got arrested. So, Dr. Octopus wants to reunite the Sinister Six. Yep, he does. Dave Mitchell Lee does writing here, and Eric Larson does the artwork. We also quick guest appearance in here by Iron Man. Yes. <clears throat> me. Some of looks like a very uncooperative. I think because he wants to get some advice, so he wants to read at the Sinister Six for this reason. Yep. And the most important story arc here when Spider-Man fights Sinister Six, he fights them all at once. Doesn't find one at a time like he did in the original story. Oh no. By the way, they do reference here. So, here's what he says. I'm preparing the crown cape for my career. And for that, I need the special accomplices. That's why I'm running my partners. So, he's planning something big. Then we have this demonic look for Hobgob. I think, what the heck is up with this look? Uh, yeah. That happened during Inferno. Yeah, Hobgoblin made a deal with a demon to make him look, 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 to make him look, look like that. Yep. And then we see Shocker make an appearance. Yes, Spider-Man deals with Shocker. Then we see Mysterio. And probably we're only three issues in. So we, see the, we see the Vulture pop up here. We see a reappearance here by Wilson Fist, the Kingpin. Doctor Strange makes appearance. Yes, Doctor Strange in Astro form, no less. So yeah. We also see Chance here too. Yeah, Chance is basically a minor Spider-Man villain. Yeah, he gets nominated quickly. Oh, by the way, also this point in time when it comes to um, now, Sam became reformed prior to this, so he was forced to do this. So. Then Nova shows up. Well, we, we was call him some Kid Nova. Yeah, from New Warriors. Yeah. See more awesomeness here. And for now, you have you have the cover of, like Doctor was strangling Doctor. So Spider Man's like, die, 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 die. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, by the way, the socket's killed and the guy gets whacked and he's taken away. Thor shows up. Yes, Thor, because it's Marvel Universe, of course. 
And then right afterwards, we have Spider-Man take on the Femme Fatales. Yes, a group of a group of women. And then she's like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, seriously. He takes that group of women. Like, so we have this amazing, this amazing six-parter, which I love it. I think it's really awesome. Mm-hmm. And then, like, okay, wrap it up. He takes this this group, new group of villains, the Fen Fatales, who are still around, by the way. Yes. And they appeared in this issue and 343, and they won't appear again until Mar Night Spider-Man number six. Well, yeah, they pop up for I think like a cameo. Yep, a cameo. They kind of say, "Oh yeah, I made a proper return in Wolverine Mystery Hunt for Wolverine Mystery in Manjapur." Yep. And they pair for like, well, a one-shot issue uh, for Modoc, and that's it. There was a Bloodless Whiplash knockout and Mind Blast. Bloodless Whiplash actually appeared part of this in the pages of Mark Hopkins as Beta Baddies for Wolverine and Spider-Man the Fight. So, so there's history of two of them. Yep. So like in the next issue, he loses powers. Yep, begins a period of time where he goes powerless. And he faced up against a new tarantula. This guy here, not the original. Yeah, he made his debut just after the events of Craven's Last Hunt. The guy was only around just for about seven years. We got killed off in uh, Center Tech All for Venom. Yep, and he appears here for this. This issue in 343, and then he's gone from the book. Yep. We have the Chameleon appear here. Chameleon is there to set up a future story arc. Then we have in 342, takes on the Scorpion. Yeah. Then we have, yeah, this powerless story arc, which takes on for three issues. Gets wrapped up with 343. And then 344, it takes on. Kardak, Rhino, and Justin Hammer and Phil Bennett. Oh, this issue in particular. First appearance of Cletus Cassidy. Yes. The man who become Carnage. Also, Black Caddy tissues help me out. Why not? So what I was thinking of these, these Karnak and Six and Karnak and, well, we were thinking, where is the Cleus Cassidy first parents? You said it was 344, right? Yes. Well, if you're curious, there he is, Cleus Cassidy, a.k.a. Carnage, in his debut, that was a cameo, and then 144, he takes on Venom again, with Boomerang, yep, Boomerang's here, though Kardec is here as well, Silver so Sable, <laughs> demands to be contacted by Spider-Man. Yeah, it's a great two-parter where it features Vault Venom, obviously. Which wraps up with issue 347, which is the last time we see Venom for a little while, not long. Oh, we have this amazing cover of Spider-Man 57 in front of Venom. Like, get rid of once and for all, but gone for a year. He comes back a year later because of Carnage. So then afterwards, basically, we have Spider-Man kind of work with the Avengers. Yep. 
And then he's like, he's going with the with the black box and got somebody else. Yeah, it feels like we're in a bit of a cool down period from that awesomeness that was that story arc. And then we have the issue in with appearance by Doctor Doom. And all that is, is issue 350 of this title. Which is a double size issue, which is amazing. I think it's great. Yep. And I give this issue, I give, well, I give this whole trade here because it's amazing. <clears throat> I give this book a 10 out of 10 because it's really good. A good period of time, basically, for Spider-Man stories. Yep. But yeah, that's it for you. Uh, next up is going to be Marshall and then two more comic corners. And yes, the next comic corner will feature a physical trade. Don't worry about that. So, in case you're curious, though, like, how many epic collections have to go discuss for Amazing Spider-Man? Have you reviewed, like, almost all of them at this point? Well, I've almost gotten done. After the next two, I'm going to discuss. Uh, there is exactly one left. Thinking, wait, what about the Max Prime You're talking about that one. Uh, I'm not discussing that one. Because everything book I've discussed before is the only thing, the only thing new in there is a one shot. It's like the Max Carnage trade review before, but just one additional issue. That's all it is. Yep. So yeah, that's it particular view. Uh like I said, Marshall's next and two comic corners. Thanks, Bye.